I'm calling this, you will attract what you expect. Some of you were in the first service. How many were here in the first service? You're coming back for round two? Oh my goodness, you wanna help me preach? Okay, you will attract what you expect. And I have some examples up here just to kind of illustrate, because I like illustrations. But let me just say, have you ever noticed that hummingbirds, they fly around looking for sweet stuff, don't they? That's what they thrive on. And then you think about buzzards. I think this is the cutest buzzard I've ever seen. <laughs> but buzzards, they actually fly around looking for dead stuff. One looks for sweet stuff, one looks for dead stuff, but they both find what they focus on, don't they? Well, do you know it's the same in life? You will get exactly what you focus on, positively or negatively. Now, let me tell you how this message came about. Um, <clears throat> my dad has always taught me that whenever you go into your prayer time with the Lord, always take two things with you. Take a journal, and he says you should always take a pen. <laughs> I'm from Texas, so <laughs> it's a normal pen. <laughs> but he says, take a journal and take a pen and practice hearing the voice of God. So I've started doing that through the years, you know, when I would think, oh, this can't be God. That's just my own head. But then I started practicing this hearing the voice of God. Well, earlier this year, I heard this in prayer and I wrote it down. The Lord said, you have entered a new era of favor and favorable opportunities. Well, then the pandemic broke out. And I literally could have thought, you know, that I clearly cannot hear from God because this is not what anyone would describe as a year of favor and favorable opportunities. But I didn't do that. I chose to believe. I truly chose to believe that I've heard from God and no matter what is happening in the world, this is going to be our year of favor and favorable opportunities. Now, let me just tell you, like I said a while ago, you're going to get in life exactly what you expect. Now, I speak at a lot of conferences that aren't Christian. They're more business success conferences. And they always tell me, some corporations tell me, Terry, you got to be real careful about what you say about the Bible because this is not a Christian event. Well, every success principle that I teach comes from God's word, every one of them. So the business world, some of you have heard of the law of attraction, right? I have some examples here. The law of attraction. Have you heard of that, Rob? that law? Okay. It basically says that your mind is like a magnet, that whatever gets in your mind and stays there, you will attract it in your life, positively and negatively. If you're constantly thinking nobody likes you, that's what you're going to attract, nobody liking you. If you're constantly thinking that you're worthless, you're going to attract people who treat you like you're worthless, right? Law of attraction. Well, in fact, I was telling the first service, it's been proven that people who come to America from other countries are three to four times more likely to become millionaires than those of us who are born here. You know why? They have it so programmed in their mind that America is a land of opportunity. It's a place where dreams come true. If I could just get to America, I know I'll be a millionaire. And consequently, they get here and they walk right to it like a magnet, right? Well, God calls the law of attraction Proverbs 23, 7. That scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so does he become. What you think about, you bring about, right? Well, um, how many of you were here when my dad preached, Jerry Savelle? Okay, well, he is known for preaching on the favor of God. Like, that is his specialty. He has studied God's favor for 50 years. And so... My dad has ingrained in me to expect the favor of God. Like everywhere you go, expect God's favor to go before you. So this is just an example I was telling the first service that years ago, I was getting ready to speak at a conference in London, England, and I got to the Dallas-Fort Worth airport and I put my luggage on the scales and the lady said, your luggage is really overweight. And I told her, Imagine that, you know, and the lady said to me, she said, I'm just not even going to charge you. I'm just going to let it go. I turned to my daughter, Cass, and I said, that is the favor of God. Well, then we flew to London. We're checking in our hotel, and this guy with the cute little British accent, he said to me as I'm checking in, he said, today is your lucky day. I said, what happened? He said, I just took hundreds of pounds off of your hotel bill. I looked at Cassidy and I said, that is the favor of God. 
Well, then, this was the cute part, at the end of that trip, we had one day, just one day, to go and play and sightsee London. So I told Cassidy, I said, let's go get on those double-decker buses and go all over London. So I walked outside the hotel, found this guy selling tickets, and I said, I need one adult ticket and one child price ticket for the tour. And the man said, you know what? I'm just going to charge you two child price tickets. I turned to Cass and said, I don't know if it's my voice or what, but that is the favor of God, right? But see, it's a result of expecting favor everywhere you go. Well, this year, during the pandemic, when the Lord said that to me, you've entered a new era of favor and favorable opportunities. We did four things this year, not 34 things, not, you know, 26 things. We did four things at my ministry and in my personal life, and I'm telling you, every single situation turned around, and what could have been the worst year ever for our ministry has been a record-breaking year. So I want to share those four with you. Is that cool? Okay, let me tell you, first of all, what the favor of God does, because you might even be like, well, I don't even understand what favor is. Well, God's favor, it will give you advantages that other people don't have. God's favor will open doors that you could never force open on your own. God's favor gives you ideas that produce great wealth. God's favor restores everything the enemy has stolen from you. Everything. You may have had a job stolen, a relationship stolen. Whatever it is, God's favor can restore it and make it better than it was before. You know, I I like to describe it like this. When you watch that team of yours play football, And you've got, this guy's looking at me real serious. (laughs) Ever since I said Dallas, he won't, you know, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm kidding. But when you're watching an NFL football game and you see that referee with the black and white striped shirt on, and he has something around his neck, it may not look quite like this, but he has a whistle around his neck. And all of a sudden you see that ref blow that whistle And you see this 300-pound linebacker stand at attention. And you think, what kind of power does that little referee have over that big linebacker? Well, see, the linebacker knows the moment that ref blows the whistle, he's not coming in his own strength. He has all of the NFL backing him up, right? Well, see, that's what happens in the spirit. When you call on the favor of God and you're saying, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I don't even know how to do this. But when you call on God's favor, you're not coming in your own strength. You now have all of heaven backing you up. That's what the favor of God will do. Okay, so let me share these four things. And ladies, you probably have this ingrained in you, and that's what I'm hoping by now. So the first thing, number one, is you have to see where you want to go. See where you want to go, right? What does that mean? You know, God's word says that where there is no vision the people perish, right? If you don't have a vision for your life, you're just perishing. In fact, I remember checking the weather before I came, and it said it was going to rain today. But it's not raining, is it? It is? Oh, we've been here for hours, so we didn't know. (laughs) Okay, so imagine as soon as church is over, you go jump in your car, and you turn it on, and it's fine. The lights work. The heater works in Pittsburgh. Everything seems to be working And it's pouring down rain, except for one thing. Let's see. The windshield wiper. How many of you know you're not going anywhere? See, as long as your vision is impaired, you'll stay where you are. And it's the same with life. If you don't have a vision for your life, then you'll be exactly where you are today next year at this time. So you have to get a vision, a dream, a goal. And, you know, I'm not going to share a bunch of mine because we've talked about this, but... I remember the first time I finally started giving myself permission to dream. And I started learning things like successful people, they not only put their dreams and goals in writing, but they add pictures to their dreams because your mind thinks in pictures. So I started putting fake pictures of me and John Maxwell acting like he's my buddy and, you know, I speak at events with John Maxwell. I put a picture of Oprah Winfrey. I put a map of Germany. I don't speak German. I don't know anyone in Germany. But I said, one day my books are translated in German. I put a picture of Les Brown, who's one of my heroes. I said, I speak at events with Les Brown. I put, I remember I Googled public school buildings. 
and printed them out and put them in my dream book. And I said, I'm making an impact in teenagers, teaching them how to set goals and make their dreams bigger than their memories. Well, all of these were so ridiculously big. I don't know Les Brown. I don't know Oprah Winfrey. I don't know anyone in Germany. I put Joel Osteen's church in here, and I said, I speak at the largest church in, a, in America. I didn't know Joel. I didn't know how any of this could happen. But ladies, do you remember me telling you all weekend, there's a principle in God's word, and of course the business world teaches this, that you become what you behold. You become what you behold. Whatever you keep before your eyes, it will eventually show up in your life. Well, everything I just shared with you has already happened. Everything. Here I am, you know, teaching at Joel Osteen's church. Here I am with Oprah Winfrey. Here we are, teenagers. My vision board course is now in public schools across America. Every single thing I wrote began to happen. Is that a coincidence? Not one bit. Because when the vision is clear, the results will appear. When your vision is clear, the results will appear. You know, I told the first service this story, and I need to tell you this because it just kind of helps you get how important it is that you write your dreams and goals because this is the perfect time of year for you to start doing this for 2021. So this professor at Virginia Tech, he walked up to random people and he just asked them one question. He said, what are your goals for life? What are your goals? He said 80% of the people he asked said, I don't know. I don't have any goals. 80% have no goals. What did God say? Where there is no vision, the people are perishing. 16% of the people he asked said, I have some goals, but I've never written them down. 3% said, I've written my goals at some point, but I don't know where they are. 1% said, I have goals, I've written them down, and I review them on a consistent basis. He said, do you know who the 1% were? Millionaires. Every single one of them were millionaires. And he said, the clues these millionaires gave us, number one, I have goals. Number two, I don't leave them in my head. I actually write them on paper. And number three, I'm constantly looking at them. We can do this, right? Okay, let me share this real quick. I wasn't going to share this part with this service, but I'll go ahead and tell it because I think it'll help you with setting your goals for 2021. So, do y'all remember when I was here before, I told you this story about this friend of mine who had the opportunity to minister to the actor Will Smith. And he said when he went to his house, he walked in and he saw this big glass wall with like 150 little index cards all over the wall. And he asked him, he said, what is all that? And Will Smith told him, he said, that's my next movie I'm working on. He said, those are all my different scenes for the movie. And he said, I just move them around till I get them the way I want them. He said, every good movie has ups and downs and good characters and bad characters and conflict and victory. And he said, I just move them around till I like it. And my friend who's looking at this said, this looks so confusing. He said, how do you even know where to start? And do you know what Will said? That's the easy part. He said, you always start with the final scene. You decide how you want it to end and then you work towards it. Well, see, it's the same with your dreams. You do the exact same thing. You decide how you want next year to end. Not this year. Next year. How do you want 2021 to end? So I always say it like this. Imagine it's December 31st of 2021. So you got like 11 and a half months, right? And you have your party hat on, and it's probably snowing in Pittsburgh. It's beautiful, right? And you turn to your friend on New Year's Eve and you say, this has been the most amazing year of my life. What needs to happen for you to say that? That's what you need to write down. So does that mean you paid off that MasterCard finally, $11,456.17? Does that mean you're driving your dream car? Does that mean you weigh your ideal body weight? Does that mean you started your own YouTube channel and you have 1,000 subscribers? What needs to happen for you to say, this was the greatest year of my life? So you project forward and you work backwards, right? You got it? Okay. What happened to the hyper people? <laughs> okay, number two is say where you want to go. Say where you want to go. And ladies, we really talked about that a lot this weekend, didn't we? The language of success. So 
And for some reason, this is what the Lord really wanted me to emphasize this weekend, was how vitally important your words are. So if you want to know where your life is headed, listen to the words coming out of your mouth. Because this right here tells us every single thing about where you're going in life. Isn't that wild? So God is the one who said that death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? So, you know, I tell stories in here of successful people who literally prophesied their own death, like John Lennon. John Lennon was asked one time, do you ever plan to leave show business? You know what his answer was? Unless I get shot or something. In a different interview, he actually said, I'll probably be murdered by a madman. That's exactly how he died. The rapper Tupac, same thing. They asked him in an interview, they said, where do you see your life over the next few years? You know what his answer was? Best case, in a cemetery. He actually wrote a song two months before he died, and the lyric said, I've been shot and killed. And he was shot and killed on the Las Vegas Strip. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? Well, God wants our words to help us, not hurt us. I like how Joel Osteen says, don't use your words to just describe your life. Use your words to change your life. So that's what this year we started making declarations I've got some of them in here. We started making declarations like we never had before over our ministry, over my personal life. As a team, every Wednesday, my staff and I would make these declarations. Personally, every morning, I would just go down the list and start declaring these over and over and over. That God's favor was going before us, opening doors no man could shut. God's favor is causing us to be recognized when we seem the least likely to receive it. And y'all... Every single thing started turning around. You know, I, I like to describe it like this. I wish I had a picture up on the screen, but I forgot to bring one. But I have a dog that looks identical to this dog right here. <laughs> Literally, he looks like a bear. And he's so, he's tiny. And he, his name is Pepe La Joie because I speak French. So I, I gave him a French name. And I, I've taught him French. He doesn't speak French, but he... <laughs> He responds to French commands, and it is the cutest thing. But the funny thing is, Peppy is very unique. He's, my husband would say he's not the smartest dog, okay, which is kind of tacky. But he literally will just kind of stare off into space. And, and Rodney's always like, is there anything going on in there? You know, and he just stares. But I've taught him French, so I'll say, au pied, Peppy la joie, and he'll come. Well, then my husband will say, Peppy, come here. And Peppy will look right at Rodney and walk to me. Like every time, he looks right at him and goes my way. And Rodney gets so mad and he always says, whatever, punk, like that. Well, I started thinking about it, though, how Peppy will not move unless we call for him. And do you know it's the same with your dreams and goals and with the favor of God? God's word says in Job twenty two twenty eight, it says, thou shalt decree a thing and it will be established unto you. Amen. Then the next part says, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. So favor is available, but you have to call for it, right? Yeah. You will decree a thing. So I want to challenge you to get a hold of these and start decreeing it like you never have before. Can we do that? Amen. Okay. The third thing I want to share, I, t I call this step where you want to go. Number three, step where you want to go. So number one was see where you want to go. Get your dreams and goals in writing. Number two, say where you want to go. Use your words to change your life. Number three is step where you want to go. And what I mean by that is take action. You know, the Bible says that faith without works is dead, right? So I want you all to know that we didn't just look at a dream book, speak to it, and God just magically caused everything to happen. No, we went to work. We took action. In fact, um, I wanted to tell you this story real quick. I thought this was cool. A friend of mine sent me this. True story. And it's about this lady, single mom, who's sitting in church just like you this morning. And when the offering went by, she just heard the Lord tell her to pledge to give $1,000 and to send it within 30 days. And she just sat there going, Lord, you know my situation. You know I do not have $1,000 to give. And the Lord said, trust me. So she said, okay, Lord, I trust you. Somehow, some way, your favor is going to make a way for me. So she said, she wrote that down. I will give $1,000 within 30 days. Well, right after church, 
She's driving home, and she said all of a sudden the Lord reminded her of an idea. How last year at Christmas, when she didn't have money for Christmas gifts for her family and friends, God gave her this idea to just make some little barrettes. And they were real fancy, like cuter than this one. And she made these, like handmade these for her family and friends, and they loved them. So she thought, hey, what if I made some of these barrettes and I sold them at my friend's boutique? So she calls her friend and she said, hey, if I, if I made a bunch of barrettes, would you let me set up a little booth and sell some? Her friend said, of course, come this, this weekend. So she said she made 25 or 30 different designs of these barrettes. She's sitting at the little booth and, you know, people are coming by one by one and they're buying them. She's selling a few. All of a sudden, this one lady walks up. True story. She picks up one of the barrettes, and she is just really inspecting every detail, and she puts it down. She picked up another one, inspected it. She said she picked up all 25 designs and is looking at every detail, and she's thinking, this is so weird. Anyway, the lady asked her, she said, did you make these? She said, yep, I made every single one of them. The woman said, I'll take 50000 The woman was a buyer for Nordstrom. She said, in one moment, my entire life changed. I went from an idea to a profession because of the favor of God. Take action, right? Okay. And then the fourth thing I wanted to share with you was what the Lord had us do. And it's so where you want to go. S-O-W. So where you want to go. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, when the pandemic first happened, we were at my office on March 18th, and we're starting to hear things about, oh, my gosh, everything's shut down, and we're going to have to ask the whole staff to go home. And my assistant came in there, and she's going, okay, this conference just canceled, this one canceled, this canceled. Everything is just sounding so negative, like this is going to be the worst year ever. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, God led me to Genesis 26, verse 1. And verse 1 says that there was a famine in the land. Now, a famine is defined as drought, poverty, undersupply, insufficiency. And I'm reading that going, that kind of sounds like what's happening in our world right now. But the Lord told me to keep reading. I got down to verse 12 and listened to what it says. It says, Isaac sowed seed in that land. Which land? The land of famine. And keep reading. It says, and in the same year, he reaped a hundred times as much as he planted. Then it says, and the Lord blessed and favored Isaac. Remember the Lord said it's a new era of favor. How did Isaac experience so much favor a hundred times as much as he planted? Because he chose to sow seed. He chose to get seed in the land during a time of famine. So I told my staff right then, it was my executive team at the table, and I said, I want in on this Genesis 26, 12 right now. I said, we're going to do exactly what Isaac did. Because in the natural, this is like the scariest thing to do. It looks like it's going to be the worst year. It looks like we should, you know, put a 75% off sale on the website, try to sell everything and hold on to our money. And I said, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to sow seed. Well, right then, the Lord told me to make my seed memorable. And honestly, I didn't even know what that meant. You know, like, how do you make your seed memorable? But I started thinking, that just means something that you don't forget. Because you know sometimes you give an offering and you don't even remember what you gave? I thought, we're going to sow twenty six twelve, like literally $2,612. And I told my staff, too, I said, I'm not trying to be super spiritual. There's nothing magical about this number. But I said, we're going to sow this as a point of contact that we are going to receive a Genesis 26, 12 harvest this year, no matter what is happening in the world. So we did. We sowed 26, 12 into several ministries. And y'all, I did exactly what I'm telling you today. We kept looking at our dreams and goals. We kept speaking these declarations more than ever before. We took action. I told the first service, from April until August, I recorded 83 videos like conferences I did online, interviews, <laughs> Facebook Live, YouTube channel, 83 videos. I'm sure I've done over 100 now. I wrote two books during the pandemic. I mean, we were just taking action going, we're not just going to sit back and expect God to do stuff. We're going to take action. And y'all, the first week of April, 
my CEO called me and said, Terry, the first week of April surpassed the whole month of March in revenue. The first week. Y'all aren't happy for me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, so I said, what in the world? And my next thought was, let's get some more seed in the ground. So we sowed another 2612, another 2612, and we've done it every single month. 2612, 2612, 2612. Well, May, the month of May broke April's records. June broke records. July broke June's records. It just kept happening. So, you know, I was telling the first service, I was not even going to share this this weekend. Like, I had a totally different message to share Sunday morning. And the Lord really corrected me that I was supposed to share this today with you. And again, I want you to know there's nothing magical about this, and I'm not trying to be super spiritual. But I do believe that there's an anointing on this for this season. Because we're still in this famine. We're still in this weird year. But I believe that there's something powerful about this if you'll grab hold of it. So I shared this with, you know, people on Facebook Live and our partners and different things. And I'm not going to read all these testimonies because every day our ministry is getting testimonies of people who said, I grabbed hold of that. I'm getting in on that 2612. This is my year to reap a hundredfold. Listen to this real quick. This was a girl named Dina. And she said um, she'd been watching the podcast on YouTube, and she said one particular one was to sow 2612. And she said, so I sowed my best, which was $26.12. She said, I have been battling my insurance company for months, over $500 they owed me. She said, so I gave my $26.12, believe in God. And she said, Terry, two days later, I received a check from my insurance company, not for $500, but for $1,012. She said, Terry, notice the 12, Genesis 26, 12. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I could go on and on telling you testimonies. But, you know, just like I told the first service, take it or leave it. If you feel like God's speaking to you, then do that. Get your 2612 seed in the ground. Get serious about your dreams and goals for 2021. Because I believe that God is accelerating things. Things that should take five years, God can do it in one year. And I don't know if you've noticed, when you look around the world today, time is ticking. You can tell <laughs> things are changing, aren't they? And God needs us to get serious about what he's put us on this earth to do. So let me close out by saying this. I don't know if y'all remember that famous bank robber named Willie Sutton. He was robbing all these banks, and the police couldn't catch him. Finally, the police caught this bank robber, and they asked him, they said, why do you keep robbing all these banks? And you know what he said? Because that's where the money is. <laughs> I just want you to know this is where favor is. This is where success is. It's with the words of your mouth and with the seeds you sow. You got it? Okay.